So you purchase a new utility trailer. Now what do you do? I know what most of you are gonna do. You're gonna hook onto this bad boy. You're gonna go to the home center. You're gonna get seven pallets of mulch stacked as high as you can go. You're gonna do your flyer bed so you can get the Art of the Month award, right? Or you're gonna put your side by side on it. You're gonna head out to the trails. You're gonna put your lawnmower. You're gonna go mow some grass. You're gonna work that dude. After all, it's what you bought a utility trailer for, right? Well, that's okay. That's what they're there for. They're made to work. But when you buy a new utility trailer, there's some certain things you need to do. There's gonna be some monthly maintenance, some things to look for, some break-in periods. So in today's video, that's what we're gonna cover. We're gonna cover from bumper to bumper, from coupler to tail end, what you need to look for on a daily basis, a monthly basis, and on an annual basis. So let's get right into it. So before we get started, I'm gonna give my shameless plug. Remember, click the subscribe, Hopefully you've been checking out our videos. If not, go and check out our channel. And remember, if you have any comments, leave those in the description below. We'd like to thank Texas Custom Trailer for supplying the trailer for today's video. Visit their website at www.txcustomtrailers.com. They have an online inventory, good folks to deal with. When you have some time, go over and check them out. Maybe you're a first time trailer buyer or maybe you've been towing trailers ever since the tire was invented. Regardless, it's all the same things to look for, uh, whether you're experienced or unexperienced. One new thing that a lot of manufacturers are going to, if you'll look here on the tongue, they put a QR code. You'll simply take that QR code, scan it to your phone, and that's gonna cover your owner's manual, it's gonna cover your maintenance schedules, any warranty info. Um, some of them will have troubleshooting guides. A lot of the manufacturers that went to this, some still use the old paper manual, which I prefer. I'm a, I'm a book kind of guy, but those are going away. It is what it is. Like it or not, a lot of them are gonna go to the QR code, but it is pretty handy just to snap that on your phone and take a look at it. So one of the first things we're gonna look at on our trailer, what to look for, this will be on a daily towing operation. So when you get ready to hook up to tow for your first day, the first thing you're gonna look for is the condition of the coupler. Make sure nothing looks off, make sure nothing's bent. Uh, make sure if it's rusty, you may want to put some, some type of dry lube on it. Some people do grease their ball in there. There's nothing wrong with that. That will help um, the ball last and to keep from grinding it up. So that's the first thing you would look for up here on the front. Also, you look at the condition of the safety chains. Um, there's a couple different types. This is an S hook. Um, they make one that's more of a clevis as a safety clip, um, but make sure these are in good condition. Make sure the chain has not drug. If it has drug, if it's got a thin spot in it, it's gonna to need to be replaced for safety purposes. When you go to hook that treader up, if it has any type of coupler lock, make sure your coupler lock is in good condition. So on this treader that has treader brakes, it does have a breakaway switch, which is required uh, by law to have that. This does not really function, has any functionality with the braking system, unless you, you lose the treader, you're involved in an accident, this pin pulls, and it engages an onboard battery that supplies 12 volt power to your brakes to slow the trailer down to hopefully keep it from going into oncoming traffic. But check that switch out, make sure the case is not broke, you have any pinched wires, make sure the lanyard that ties it back to the trailer um, is good. We always provide a clip where that goes into your safety chain hooks on your tow vehicle. So take a look at that. Then moving back, you would look at the jack. This has a nice flip jack on it. Another thing that this has that's nice, it has a grease zerk. Um, believe it or not, those will accept grease. Um, most jacks that we see, the grease worms get them and they're tore all to pieces because they never get any grease. If your jack does not have a grease zerk, the only way to grease that is to take this handle off, raise the trailer, pull the shaft out of the jack, manually grease by hand the bearing that's in the top, then you have to reassemble the jack. A lot of the companies are getting better about putting a grease zert on, just put you a little grease in there and that will help the life of the jack. This is the breakaway battery that is associated with the breakaway switch. It'll have a test button on it that shows if it's charged or it needs to be recharged when you're hooked to your tow vehicle. If your tow vehicle has a 12 volt um, supply wire, it will show that it's charging, so make sure that's in good condition. And now to another very important part of the treader is this is a seven-way plug, so your treader light connection. These get drug, um, they get chewed by cows, goats, sheep, dogs, and any other farm animal you may have around. So always inspect this. If it's been chewed through, if it has a cut, it can short out, pop a fuse in your truck, and you're not gonna have some function on your treader. Also, these will get dirty in here. and needs to be cleaned out with some contact cleaner from time to time. They will corrode if this sets out in the weather a lot. If you don't use it, you can use some dielectric grease. 
which works good, but I do recommend if you're gonna put dielectric grease in here, you're going to need to keep this covered because it will attract dust and dirt and it's just gonna make a big old mess in there. So just, just keep your plug in good condition. These do get worn out when they do, just simply have it replaced. Cut this off. You can see our video on how to wire a seven way plug on there and you can replace these and a lot of times your cord is fine. So just keep an eye on that. So now moving down the side of the trailer, you just kind of want to look at it on a daily basis to make sure you don't have any frame cracks. Nothing looks off. Make sure your lights are in place. Move back to your tires. Uh, check your tire pressure. If you're towing, I mean, this time of the year when it's cool in the morning and hot in the evenings, you need to check your tire pressure every time you tow. Um, look at the manufacturer's rating on the tire and or your owner's manual and it will cover tire pressure. Up near the VIN sticker at the front, many times the manufacturer will put tire pressure and what they recommend for the tires to be running on this unit specifically. You'll also take a glance at your suspension components um, in there on a regular basis. Just really every time you get ready to tow, just, just visually look at them so you can make sure you're not missing a bolt, you're not missing a nut. Um, depending on how rough of a road that you travel on a regular and daily basis, those bolts can back out. They are locking, but if you have a rough road like we have around here, they will back them out. Coming to the back of the trailer, again, check your lights that you have on there. Make sure they're in place. Once you hook up to the truck, make sure your turn signals are functioning, brake lights, and running lights. Just make sure all that stuff's good to go. This trailer here has a gate on it, so that would be something else to check. Just check your latch mechanisms. Make sure everything you know is, is locking properly. You would not want to lose a gate going down the highway. That would make a mess. Check any hinge pins. These do have removable hinge pins, so they have a bolt um, that retains that in there, so make sure that's in place. Some are just welded on and they'll have a grease dirt. So if it's greasable, be sure to hit that with some grease from time to time. That's really it on your day-to-day -to -day towing. Always just take a look at your floor, make sure you don't have a board broke or coming loose. Just check that every time, it really doesn't take. It takes less time to do it than what I'm, what I'm shooting in this video, but you need to do that. It's also a good idea, just look around to see if there's any cracking. Uh, these trader, this trader is built very well, but again, with however you're using the trader, road conditions, um, what you're loading on it, you could get a frame crack. If you can catch that early, then get it repaired and uh, save you some money and some time down the road. Now some things to do on maybe a monthly basis, really inspect, you know, I, I hate to say crawl underneath the trailer, but it's not a bad idea. If you have the capability to do that, just kind of poke your head or if you have a creeper crawl under, check your U-bolts. Again, check your suspension, the bolts that you can't necessarily see um, in the center, the bolts that are behind the tire. Um, give the tires a shake to see if maybe a wheel bearing's loose. You can check out our video on that, how to tighten up a loose wheel bearing. Um, these will get a little slack in it once, they, once you wear them in. Check your dust caps. Make sure if you have a rubber plug or just a solid cap, make sure that's always in place. If that comes off and you get a bunch of dirt in there, it's going to eat the bearings off of this trailer. While you're down here looking at the dust cap, um, inspect the wheel as well. Make sure you don't see any cracking, any signs of rust. Many times if the wheel does have a bad spot, a crack, it will show some signs of rust. One of the things that gets overlooked maybe the most are the lug nuts. Those lug nuts don't always stay tight forever. You have to do a little maintenance. You need to, to retorque those. We're gonna cover that here in a, in a minute. Um, that will be covered in your owner's manual on what intervals to do that. Um, it's very important, especially if you have a trailer with aluminum wheel. Um, they are more susceptible to coming off than a steel wheel. But again, I cannot stress it enough, check your lug nuts. We have trailers that come in here three-legged all the time because the lug nuts have not been tightened after maybe you've had a spare changed or, or a tire, a flat fixed. It comes off, you never find it. Um, who knows where that tire and wheel went. So check your lug nuts, check your lug nuts, check your lug nuts. So you've purchased your trailer, you're leaving the lot. What are some of the first things that you're gonna have to do? We've already covered several of those. As I said, this trailer here has trailer brakes. One thing I need you to know that when you buy a new trailer, the brakes are not going to work. When you buy a new trailer, the brakes are not going to work. The brakes are not going to work. The brakes are not going to work. I know that's crazy, but they're just not. They have to be burnished in. It's gonna take about two, 250 miles to burnish these trailer brakes in. They're gonna work at best, depending on humidity and how warm it is outside, about 15 or 20%. Once you get them burnished in at 200 to 250 miles, you're gonna to need to have them adjusted manually. Once you have them adjusted the first time, you can go every 3,000 miles and have them adjusted. It's very important that you adjust your brakes 
every 3,000 miles. It keeps the drums from overheating, uh, keeps from overworking your magnets, and you'll have proper braking. Um, also, you need to double check your tow vehicle to make sure that you have a brake controller installed. If you do not have a brake controller, whether it be factory or an aftermarket, you're going to need to get one of those installed. The other thing you need to do is, I say many times in this video, is you're going to need to check your lug nuts. I'm going to recommend you retighten these to factory torque spec at 50 miles, 75 miles, and 150 miles. Your owner's manual may say something different than that, but it's going to be close to that. And you may say, well, that's just too much. It's only too much unless your wheel falls off and goes across the highway. Then 50, 75, and 150 would have took no time at all. Check the lug nuts, please. Did I mention check your lug nuts? I don't know if we've covered that this part of the video yet, but you need to re-torque your lug nuts. Don't have loose lug nuts. I think we covered that but don't forget to check your lug nuts. Something else that you need to do, once you've had this shredder uh, for a little while, this has a treated lumber floor, which a lot of them will come with. After this floor dries out, 30 to 90 days, depending on how wet it was when it's installed, just kind of take a look at it, you're going to need to reseal it. You're gonna to need to use some Thompson's, just some clear or transparent sealer. You can use some of the ones that has stain in it, but you're gonna to need to treat this to increase the longevity and lifespan of your treader floor. Um, as far as I know, no manufacturer will warranty the floor for cupping, cracking, shrinking, splintering, turning gray, any of that stuff. If you go buy a treated lumber today at the, the lumber store, look at the warranty information. It's going to say the exact same thing. And I will tell you from experience, the lumber we get today is not what it was 10 or 20 years ago. So at least one time a year, I'm going to encourage you to put some type of water seal on here. It will double the life of this floor. If you leave this treader out in the elements year round, you may want to hit that a couple of times a year. It'll cost you a little bit of money, but depending on lumber prices, the Thompson water seal or whatever you choose to put on there is going to be cheaper than re-flooring your treader. I have seen floors that are completely neglected to stay out in the elements that need, need new flooring in you know two to three years. Um, if, you, if you put some water seal on it, you may get seven plus years out of it, depending on the quality of lumber. So we've covered what to look for on a daily basis, monthly basis. So say you've got your treader for a little while, maybe you're six months down the road or maybe you're a year down the road. Depending on how much you pull your treader, at the very minimum, something that's overlooked a lot, you're going to need to have your bearings repacked. So at least once a year or every 12,000 mi miles, which most manufacturers can recommend, you're either going to need to do that yourself or take it into a qualified shop to completely tear down the brake system and the hubs just to make sure everything is operating correctly and to have those bearings washed, repacked, or replaced and put back together to factory specs. That does not mean coming in here and pumping some grease in here four or five times a year and that's good. Um, that, that's okay if you want to do that. Just be sure not to over grease that. Check our video out on that. Uh, get you a good laugh out of it. But no, it means completely torn down and repacked at least one time a year. If you're pulling a lot, um, you need to do that two times a year um, just to save from losing a hub, ruining an axle. Um, while they're doing that, have them look at your suspension every six months or one time a year just to make sure if you need to have an equalizer replaced, any of your suspension bolts and or bushings, springs and or U-bolts on that. They can check the frame for cracks. You can check the frame for cracks. Also take a look at the wiring at that time. Make sure you don't have any rat chew underneath there, squirrels, or if you have livestock, if you're parking in the pasture, make sure the goats hadn't been up there helping you out with your wiring. If you don't own a trader or haven't purchased a new trader, thanks for watching anyways. Go get you a trader, man. Check out Texas Custom Traders, www.txcustomtraders.com. Have a great online inventory with pricing. If they don't have what you need, I bet they can get it for you. I think we've covered just about everything on here. If I miss something, it's in your owner's manual. It's your responsibility to check your owner's manual and tighten your lug nuts. Tighten the lug nuts, okay? It's very, very important. So what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna pull this thing out. I've gotta get some stuff in here to work on because we're stacking them up. We'll see you soon.